detail. Can you just give us a bit more detail on these allegations involving the former minister? Yeah, absolutely, Yveka. The uh, allegations are made by Hank Hesslinger, uh, a former senior investigator in the uh, South African police, and he basically alleges that he was summoned to a meeting by then Safety and Security Minister uh, Sidney Mafamadi, along with Commissioner George Fivers, uh, then Police Commissioner, uh, at which meeting they were instructed uh, to reopen the investigation into the death of Stompy Seipei and look in particular at the alleged involvement of uh, the late Winnie Madigazela Mandela. That is Hank Hesslinger's allegation. Uh, but in the, in the days after that, we did hear from George Fivers, who presented a version slightly different from uh, Hank Hesslinger, because George Fivers says the investigation was reopened at the behest of Tony Leon, uh, the leader of the Democratic Party uh, then, uh, the predecessor to the Democratic Alliance. So um, I, I do expect that we'll hear a bit more from uh, Sidney Mofamadi exactly what his, his involvement, uh, if any, uh, was in this particular matter um, and I do suspect that you'll be hearing him uh, repeating a lot of what George Fivers uh, had to say and also clarifying the in particular the dates because um, you know when did Sidney Mofamadi for example become Minister of Safety and Security uh, and what was his role really in the reopening of the investigation we know what the investigation found the reopened investigation we know from uh, what George Fivers had to say George Fivers saying that after doing an investigation almost from scratch because they felt that, you know, they could not uh, get enough details of the previous, uh, the initial investigation. They restarted the investigation into the death of Stompy Seipei and they found absolutely no evidence of Winima Digizela Mandela's involvement uh, in the killing of Stompy Seipei. Um, so that part we know, but there's been disappointment and the conversation that has happened subsequent to these revelations has been quite intense. Uh, and people like Sidney Mofamadi have been in the spotlight and we expect this morning that he will clear the air and sort of take us into his confidence about what he knows and what he doesn't know. Well, uh, I suppose, Tula, I this leads us to ask, you know, is this the first time uh, that we've heard such claims, especially involving somebody like Sidney Mofamadi? I mean, we, we know all the conspiracy theories and especially over the past week or so when it comes to the stories and the controversies around Winnie Maliki's Zella Mandela. But have we heard, have we had an inkling of uh, such involvement or alleged involvement of the likes of Sidney Mofamadi before? Well, I think uh, the current allegations that were made by Hank Hesslinger and the kind of controversy they have stirred uh, in the public discourse, I, I suppose it talks more to uh, the feeling that, um, you know, Winnie Madigizela Mandela was not treated fairly uh, by her own comrades in the ANC and the feeling that she was let down by uh, her own comrades in the ANC and also how society related to this very powerful woman who was at the forefront of the struggle for the liberation and the uh, attainment of uh, freedom uh, and, and democracy in South Africa. I think that's where it really fits in and the examination of the roles of various individuals such as Sidney Mofamadi, such as the media uh, back then as you're hearing about you know the allegations of media that was said to be in cahoots with uh, the then Stratcom uh, of the apartheid regime and how they related with this powerful figure uh, Winima Digizela Mandela that is really where the conversation is uh, and how you know a patriarchal uh, system uh, simply could not relate with this powerful woman uh, and the uh, the feeling that then she was then treated unfairly uh, even by her own uh, comrades and um, her possible ascendance to uh, even higher office perhaps um, and, and more prominent role and perhaps even uh, the mere acknowledgement of the role, the very uh, central role that she played uh, in the struggle for liberation uh, was sort of undermined uh, including the allegation goes by her own comrades. I think that's where the conversation really fits in and the examination of the role then of people such as Sidney Mofamadi sort of fi uh, fits in uh, into that kind of uh, self-introspection uh, and examination of our history in that way. All right, and, and, and while we wait to, us to hear what Sidney Mofamadi has to say, how he will explain this away, um, the other question is what would uh, somebody, like, somebody like Hank Hesslinger have to gain now 
as one at this time uh, but by coming out with all of this and then also by uh, sort of implicating someone like Sidney Mufamadi. Well, let's remember, Yuveka, that this documentary, Winnie, uh, was actually made a few years ago. I think it was in 2013, and it's been out for a while. Um, it's just that it was only broadcast um, in South Africa by ENCA in the past week in the light of the passing of Winnie Madigizela Mandela. So the question of why now, it's sort of a few years ago that these uh, revelations came forward. But certainly, uh, there are questions of why now. I mean, they were expressed, I, I guess, more uh, powerfully by Zenani Mandela uh, at the funeral service, uh, where she was basically saying that we've seen a lot of vindication of Winnie Matigizela Mandela's uh, legacy and contribution to the struggle, but as a family, we are left to ask, it's called comfort to us, and we are left to ask, why now? Why are people coming out now? And in fact, she spoke about uh, George Fivers, uh, saying that she was particularly disappointed by George Fivers coming out now to say that their investigation found no evidence of Winnie Madigizela Mandela being involved in the killing of Stompy Seipei. Um, but in fairness to George Fivers, he did indicate that the public record has been there. Um, he says that th what he told ENCA in the past week is exactly what he said in 1997 when he testified before uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. He says in his words, uh, at that point, Winnie Madigizela Mandela herself even asked for a meeting and said, can I meet you? And at that meeting, uh, thanked Fivers for his testimony. And Fivers then relates the story and says, well, you know, I wasn't doing this as a favor to you. I was merely being truthful about what our investigation found. All right. Well